Hello, good evening everyone. This is Master Coach Asmin, a certified life coach from the Global Institute for Coaches and Entrepreneurs. Welcome to Peer Connect of the Hour episode for our fellow in Project Bantu Philippines. We are doing this video series as a service to our community during this time of physical isolation due to COVID-19. And with me, I am with Coach Glenda. Hi, good evening. Uh, good evening, Jimmy. Good evening, Coach Asmi. Coach Glenda, also a change agent certified by the Global Institute for Coaches and Entrepreneur. Uh, the Peer Connect, Who of the Hour, is our initiative to connect with individuals in my network who's also sharing similar mental health and wellness advocacy. Uh, we mm. are connecting to know what is their present situation, how they are responding to their present realities, and the outcome they are presently experiencing as a result of their chosen response. Yes, and for the information of many, Global Institute for Coaches and Entrepreneurs is based in Dallas, Texas, USA, with local presence through our 24-7 coaching hub at Recap Coffee Republic, located in PC Compound, Capitolio, Pasig City. We offer coach, coaching on demand services any time of the day. Just connect through 0917-586-1661 or visit our FP page, Life Coach Philippines. We also provide Life Coach certification classes for those interested to become a professional life coach like us. So to continue, close again that. Yes, let me uh, introduce our who of the hour, Jamie Benito from Makati, Manila. Uh, so Jamie, please tell us more about you and your present situation, especially your challenges with this global pandemic. Yes. Right. Well, let me start by thanking you all for, for having me. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be here. Um, I understand that it's a very uh, challenging time for everyone around the world. Um, and so, like, you know, these, these opportunities to, to kind of talk about our work and, like, um, you know, do something positive are, are really a welcome break. Uh, so thank you so much. Um, so, again, um, I head a nonprofit organization called Project Banti Philippines. And uh, we use a Bra Afro Brazilian art called Caparangola to empower uh, vulnerable young people and children. Um, so, you know, I mean, like, uh, it's a reality in this country that there's a, a, a large swath of the population that's under the poverty line. And so, you know, living in these conditions, having substandard living environments, poor schools, lack of proper nutrition, this results in uh, children growing up and developing a lot of deficits in terms of their behaviors, in terms of their learning. Um, you know, not, it, it, to, be, to be blunt about it, it's just um, the lack of support and resources that uh, children who live under the poverty line receive um, lead to them kind of growing up um, with challenges, a lot of challenges and lacks, and um, as I said earlier, deficits that their more affluent counterparts um, don't have to contend with or have the burden of their as they don't go into adulthood. And this is why we see a lot of poverty, because, um, you know, a lot of these kids are not prepared for the workplace. A lot of these kids lack um, discipline, perseverance, persistence. Um, and that's really a product of their upbringing in their environment, and even their, 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 school, their schooling. Um, so um, up until, you know, this whole uh, pandemic broke out, um, we were teaching over 300 kids. Um, half of, more than half of that being uh, children who are in uh, government centers managed by the DSWD, the Department of Social Welfare and Development. And um, also about 50 of them um, were based in a community in Manila called San Estudio. So this is a slum community, uh, very poor, very overpopulated, uh, right with social problems and challenges. And, you know, this is where we're kind of most concerned uh, at the moment. The kids who are in the government centers, they, you know, they're receiving the proper support. Um, the chances of them being exposed to the virus are very small because they generally don't speak the virus and they can't be closed off to visitors uh, at present. However, the kids in the community are, are really feeling the brunt of this, um, this pandemic. Um, you know, they say if the virus doesn't get you, then the, uh, the hunger is going to get you. 
Um, so obviously, yeah. like uh, as we all know, like with the uh, rules being imposed under the um, extreme enhanced community quarantine, uh, you know, the majority of their parents are no longer able to pursue their livelihoods. So they're basically starving, honestly. And um, you know, much as the reports on social media are that the government and the, the local governments are doing a great job about distributing food, the, the reality is that we're hearing that, you know, there's not enough to go around and sometimes what they get, you know, is not enough for, for larger families and but not everyone's just not everyone is getting um, support. Um, yeah. and so that's that's really our concern, you know, that's really our concern. Um we're, we're, we're kind of just at that level of subsistence, um, trying to make sure, A, that they're, they're staying at home and following the rules so they don't catch the virus and transmit it to other people. Yeah. But also, B, that, that, that they have food on the table. That, that, you know, um, I mean, I think it's clear, right? I mean, people who are hungry, people who are under like physical duress um, caused by hunger are not going to make good decisions as well. Um, so that's really that's really what we're seeing, and I think that's that's like our our major concern um, yeah. as of this time. That that would be it, I would say. Yes. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> heavy. <laughs> I feel heaviness. Yes, <laughs> but. Um, it, it, I mean, you know, honestly. I, I I wish I wish I could sugarcoat it and make it sound better than it is, but. But that's just really yeah. what it is. I mean, I'm talking to kids and like, you know, when I call them and I ask them how they're doing, the first thing they say is we're hungry. Yeah. You know, we're hungry. We don't yeah. have anything left. And, you know, it, 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 it makes me feel bad, but it also makes me feel a little revolted by the fact that they have to deal with this. You know, and there's, there's just yeah. this, this mindset here in the Philippines that, you know, we, we just kind of accept things as, as, as they are and like uh, there's not really much that can be done, but that's completely untrue. And um, yeah. it's something that we hope, uh, you know, getting to, to the questions that you're asking, it, it's one of the things we hope we can get out of this. It's, it's consciousness about why it's important to elect the right people, put the right people in office. You know, the people who are going to work for you are not just the people who are going to, uh, you know, feed you when it comes to election yeah. time, like, like, you know. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I think, yeah, I think Jamie, you know, you answered already and I, I briefed you on this. It's like, you answered already our questions. Right? Um, and I know, I, I mean, this is something that I know you're already doing, but please share with us how, uh, I, you know, some of the things that you're already doing to respond to nutrition, but do you want to share a little bit more about how you're uh, responding. What else are you doing to respond to this crisis? Yeah, right. Sure, sure. I'd love, I'd love that. Um, well, okay, so we work with uh, young people, right? And um, what I'm noticing, uh, you know, I think like this whole situation is very um, complicated in that it's putting us all in like uh, situations that we never thought we would be in. And I think that's important, actually, is just to kind of understand that people are going to deal with this in their own way, and that it's important not to kind of put everyone in boxes, especially kids, and, and say that, no, they need to be handling it this way, and this is what needs to happen. Um, you know, I think, like, uh, my teacher, who, who we're in contact with, like, doing things online, trying to figure this all out, um, you know, he always says, this, this is the time where we need to be more patient with each other, we need to support each other. This 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 time when we're 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 all kind of trapped in our own little spaces, and you know it can get it can get really nerve wracking and it can get very challenging. But like it's a moment to, to support each other. So what I've been noticing is that the kids have been kind of um, retreating into comfortable spaces for them. So what that is and what I'm seeing would be things like social media that would be using their phones, that would be using their computers. Um, and you know, not really, not really wanting to do more than that. Um, I think that it has a lot to do with this feeling of being um, trapped, right, and not having control, which is something that kids enjoy, especially teenagers who are trying to discover what uh, autonomy and like uh, self determination and things like that are all about. Um, so I've been trying to work with the kids that way, um, either through 
at, at the onset, I realized that one of the major challenges was that they weren't getting the right information. Mm. Um, kids who were especially yeah. just on Facebook and not following you know, reliable resources were, you know, in the dark. They were wondering why we had to be staying at home in the first place. And like all they, all they had to go on was somebody told them to stay home and not why. So they were just leaving the house anyway. This is like the first week of the quarantine. So um, one thing yeah. I, I resolved to do at, at at, at the onset was like to record a, a video of just me explaining to them like um, you know I know it's challenging but you have to stay home and this is why you know it might be that you, yeah. you might not have any symptoms you might not be feeling sick but you might have it in your lungs and in your body and you're spreading it with everyone else in your house um, so that was one yes. of the things um, we've also I've also just you know been the ones who have phones uh, been trying to call them up see how they are see, see how yeah. they're doing you know, even if, if they don't share yeah. a lot, it's just it's just hearing a familiar voice and you know, saying hearing somebody tell them that it's okay and like if you need anything, just call me or send me a message. You know, I think that's that's important for kids wow. to kind of keep that sense of normalcy. Um, and um, so we teach capoeira, which is uh, a game and it involves a lot of physical movement. So um, I just been sharing like some things that they can work on at home. Um, you know, obviously it's very challenging because a lot of them live in very small houses uh, with a lot of other people. So, um, you know, the ones who do have the space, we can send them videos and like your stuff that you can work on. Yeah. Again, with the expectation that this is just, it's just giving them options of things they can be doing and, and like um, a continuation or like that sense of continuity that things are not you know, completely, completely different, but it's something that is still there. Um, other than that, um, as, I, as I mentioned, like, um, we, we just uh, realized that um, one of the things we need to start to prepare is if we want to make sure that the kids are, are okay is, is um, supporting their families. Um, so, you know, it, it's unfortunate that, like, we can't be in touch with all of our students because a lot of them are, uh, are so poor that they don't have phones. Yeah. Um, so we've been just working, trying to call um, the parents of the ones who do have phones. And, um, you know, um, we've been raising funds to make sure that they, 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 you know, can have the things that they need to survive, you know. It's, again, it, it's just that, you know, we, we feel... We feel um, we feel bad about our own situations, but there are just so many people who have it worse. Um, so you know, that's kind of what I've been asking people. I mean, I've been saying I know it's really uncomfortable. I know it's difficult. I know we all have anxiety about yeah. whether things are going to back to normal and if you know we can buy food or if the banks are going to be open next week. But imagine the people who have less. <laughs> imagine the people who yeah. have it worse off because it's much worse off. You know. Um, a lot of people I hear complaining about like uh, these people who live in slum communities and like, oh, you know, they're not staying at home. They're, they're not helping, you know, contain the virus and flattening yeah. the curve. But, you know, we all know how hot it is. It's summer. You know, 10 people yeah. crammed into a closed space with one electric fan. Who, who can stand that? You know, I mean, I, I'm yeah. not, you know, yeah. I'm not, I'm not condoning anything. I'm just saying that um, we need to take care of these people, you know. <laughs> we need to do more than just complain about their behavior and like lament what can't be done. We need to take care of them. And I think um, yeah, that's that's what we've resolved to do. Yeah, and yeah, yeah you've sorry. shared a lot. You've shared um, a very wonderful uh, perspective, you know? And right now, I would like to ask you personally, how are you responding? Given that you can see all the children, their family, and the challenges, ano, Jaime. So, but you, how, do you, how are you personally responding seeing that? I mean, you know, I would be lying if I said I was taking it well. <laughs> I'm somebody, I mean, I was able to meet with Glenn, Coach Glenn uh, uh, right, before, right before this all happened, and we were in the middle of you know, trying to do this big fundraiser yeah. for, for another project. And I'm somebody who personally, like, really, really is into my work. And, like, I don't take a lot of breaks. Not because I have to, but because I enjoy what I do so much. You know, I love to do the I love to work with kids. 
Um, I have some of the kids that live with me, so um, it's really something that I, you know, um, it was like a routine and it was a grind, but I really enjoyed it. So, like, this has been really tough. <laughs> this has been really tough having to stay home and, um, and uh, you know, kind of uh, reorient and, like, regroup and, and um, just kind of reframe everything. Um, and it's also been tough, yeah. like, you know, as, as, you, as you mentioned, kind of seeing and hearing all of these things yeah. and, you know, not being able to go to the community just because I live with my family and I, I, and I don't want to bring, you know, anything back from the outside to them, you know. Um, so it's, it's been challenging. Um, but, yeah. uh, you know, I was telling a friend of mine, um, I said that it's also been strangely interesting because it's such a surreal um, experience and like it's I feel like it's put all of us or at least myself in like a position that I've never been in and never expected to find myself in so like if, if, if I stop and think about my thinking and my thoughts it's very interesting to see like uh, how my behavior is changing within this this uh this situation um, so yeah yeah what new things did you find so sure. really more yeah can, yeah, can oh, you share yeah. some of those? <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> let me let me let me, uh, let, let me uh, choose from among the the pleasant ones. <laughs> no, um, I think like you know, I so I work with uh, young people, right? and one of the things that we try to to, to help them develop is um, a sense of self reflection and self uh, evaluation, and and the idea that. Um, if you're aware of your thinking, then you can change what you're about to do because you are aware that you're about to do it as opposed to just, you know, acting on impulse. Um, so, you know, I, 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 I feel like sometimes um, given the, the stress maybe and the, um, the strain of the situation and then psychologically and mentally, like, um, you know, there are just moments where normally where you find that you, on a normal Time you would have more patience that, that that you know you can see you can see yourself kind of slipping into being irritated and um, you know it's 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 been interesting and I think that that's um, one thing my teacher was telling me uh, my kapoor uh, teacher was telling me was that you know you should tell the kids that as well like this is a time where you can develop a lot of mental resources and social and behavioral resources like self-control, like discipline, like patience, like restraint, like, um, you know, um, cooperation and like uh, teamwork, uh, things like that. So it's, it's, it's something I feel like would not have arisen had this not happened. Yeah. Coach G, you know, Yes, I'm. It's, I'm really having a hard time um, catching all the words because I have the reception. But um, I just want to say, you know, you shared so much, uh, Jamie, and thank you for sharing all that. And I think that um, uh, one of the one of the, one of the many things that you shared that I really like is that you know the way you've responded in a. To, um, in supporting the children out in the community, like the mm -hmm. fact that you're giving them like the why, like why do you have to behave uh, a certain way instead of just you know do what I say. It's like you're telling them, "Kung bakit nila kailangan gawin yon," which I think mm -hmm. I'm with you that it's more impactful and understand the reasoning behind those bawal bawal gawin. So, um, so I, I'm in line with all the things that you said. There's one question. Oh, I think I don't know if this is fair to ask because there's so many concerns. One biggest concern that you have during this time. There's a lot of concerns I heard. All of them, we heard all of that. But what is the one, uh, the most yeah. concern that you have during this time? The biggest concern that I have. Um... Yeah. Well, uh, first of all, um, just to just to go on what you were saying, yeah, I think like one thing that we really need to be mindful about, and maybe even for the kids who are or the young people who are around us, is where exactly they're getting their information and what it is they need. Um, so it's useful, I think, to talk to your kids or to talk to your younger cousins or whoever you're with, the teenagers or young people who are with you, um, just to to find out, like you know, 
um, what do they know about this? Is, is it accurate? Where are they getting their news sources from? Why is it important that they know what's going on? I think like those are important things that we need to talk about with kids. I would say that kids who are very poor, um, it's challenging, you know, it's challenging. A lot of the major news outlets that we have are in English, for example. So, you know, you have your you you, you have the big the big names out there, international and local. So uh, you know, the kids are gonna have a really hard kids are gonna have a really hard time understanding that if they're from poor communities. So um, we there needs to be somewhere where this is coming from. You know, there needs to be some source. Um, I think, like, I think the biggest concern. Um, well, obviously, my biggest concern right now is what's in front of me. It's it's whether or not we're going to be able to continue supporting the the families that we've already committed to supporting. Um, we've been uh, since since um, the 29th of March, like we've uh, we managed to support around 15 families. So that's that's over 100 people already. Um, mm. But it, it it would be like you know, it would have to be something consistent. There's there's no um, certainty as to when this is all going to be over. Um, and once this is over, a lot of these people are going to need capital to restart, uh, you know, to restart, to, 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 buy, to buy things that they would have been selling, to, to, to just get back on their feet. Um, so, you know, we've been, it's been amazing. I mean, the, the outpour of support that we've, we've received just from, very little marketing on Facebook and like sending yeah. messages to people has been amazing. And, you know, um, while I would say I am concerned, I, just from what I've seen, I, 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 I'm just overwhelmed by, by how much people who are in this, you know, are all in these tight, these tight spots, but how, how willing people have been to help out. And not just people here, like people from abroad, people from the US, people from Australia, um, people from Thailand, different different parts, just sending small amounts. But when you all, when you put it all together, um, you know, yes. it's, it's 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 such a big difference. Such yeah. a big difference. It's all those small small deeds coming together, making a. It's beautiful. Right. It's beautiful. Right. Um, right. It's, it's so. I, I, so go on, go on, Jamie. No, I was just going to say, I think like, um, you know, we're all connected to people. Yeah. Right? We're all connected to people. And um, I, I would just say like, you know, we should all be just thinking of ways that we can reach out to the people who need our help. I mean, everyone knows people who are hurting right now, I feel like, in some way or other. And whether you donate to the frontliners or you're donating to, to families who have no food, or, you know, to, to people who are, you know, just who are lonely or people who are, who are having a hard time right yes. now. It's like Coach Glenda was saying, every little bit um, will help us, yeah. us get through this. So this is just, I, I feel a time for us to really pull together and help each other out. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Very, yes. Ins yeah. Very inspirational, Jamie. Uh, you know, this is my second time talking with you, like, face to face. Right. But uh, you've always inspired me, just the heart, your heart to like help others. And, um, you know, if I, if, yeah, I have projects on or on, you know, that you were hoping to happen. And this is, you know, this is kind of like a little hindrance to that. But um, of the outcome, <laughs> if I ask the outcome that you would like to see. Mm, what well, that's, that a, that's a great question. <laughs> I mean, clearly the immediate outcome that we would like to see is that this would all just be over tomorrow. Yeah. Um, but, um, unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. that's not how it's going to work. Um, so, you know, I guess that the, the, the one thing that we hope, um, you know, we can, take, we can only take the positives out of this experience, right? I, I don't know how productive it would be for us to, like, dwell on it. On the negatives and we can try to make sure that we all get out of this safely and that everyone is taken care yeah. of but you know moving forward i think like it's it's a big wake-up call for people just to, especially i think who we really need to be focusing on here are the people who are who are feeling it the most and who perhaps realize the least that there is something that they could be doing 
to 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 better prepare themselves for the for for the next time this happens. God forbid that it ever happens again. Yeah. Um. You know. So there's just there are just so many areas that this 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 whole experience has affected people on. Whether it's politics, whether it's health, whether it's hygiene, whether it's community, whether it's how we deal with each other. You know. I feel like. Uh, you know, one of one of the things uh, I read on Facebook that I found to be particularly striking was um, it said, before we go back to normal, we should figure out which parts of normal we want to go back to or we should go back to. And I think that was, yes. that was a great statement. Because there were definitely a lot of things wrong. And, and, you know, I think, like, for the kids, especially who we work with, that, you know... Yeah. I think that we can somehow translate this into a learning experience for them um, and help them realize that, that the choices that we make matter and that that's why we need yes. to pull together, that's why we need to support each other, that's why we, you know, we need to be selfless and think about other people because if we don't, then we end up in situations like this where, you know, some people are yeah. just left by the wayside and you know, have to have to experience the, the difficulties that they're experiencing at times like this. So that's that's what I hope we can take away from it, like the the learnings. The, yeah. The, because otherwise, it would have just been for nothing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Coach G. Since we are in a peer connection, yes. so what is something in uh, something uh, something in common you have? Common interest. <laughs> Something in common that Jamie, yeah. my gosh, yeah. I, 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 you know, in meeting with Jamie and listening to uh, really his, his heart to want to help people, mm -hmm. you know, the underprivileged kids to better themselves. Uh, I mean, I think that is something that is uh, common between Jamie and I because when I was hearing his story and how he wants to help these kids, I was immediately really just. Um, okay, I'm bored. How can I be, you know, how can I support, how can I help? Um, so, I mean, that's, I think it's the whole health and wellness promotion that mm. I am such a big advocate for that is in line with what, you know, what Jamie wants to do with these kids. So we're, I mean, Jamie, you said so many things about all these things that the, the kids need, not just the politician it's all this holistic approach like multi-pronged yeah. approach to kind of really lift them up from their situation so um i think we have we have in common is the passion to help others uh to really better themselves right yeah. I, I think as well like so, just just the notion of what health and wellness are are, are something that we share, you know, that health and wellness, wellness are not just necessarily mm. the things that we put in our mouths or how we move our bodies, but that, you know, it's really something that translates into so many aspects of life and being and being with other people. And, you know, the idea, and I think that Coach, Coach Brenda, um, you know, uh, really communicated as well when we were meeting and even now is that, you know, when others are well, then you're well. But when others are not well, then it, it's hard to be well, you know. It's it's just it's it's not it's not real when when some people are, are, are suffering and other people are, are are being well. And I think that's that's really what what I felt like the the, the connection was as well was is that um, understanding. Yeah, wonderful, Coach. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, yeah. It is. It's the whole idea. I think him. Uh, I mean, I shared understanding that we're connected which is the connection oh yes so thank you Jamie. and if the children thank you Jamie. thank you thank you they will be watching this on replay at coach a coach a community what will you tell to your to the children that you are helping well i'm just saying to them uh mabata um content is content chaga Kaya natin, malalagpasan din natin ito, hindi ko sa mga um, Kailangan natin magsakripisyo, kailangan natin magkaisa sa uh, ating komunidad. No? At uh, tayo kasaway, no? mag-ingat tayo. Supportahan natin ang isa at lalo na yung mga pamilya natin. No? I miss all of you, miss ko na kayong lahat. 
At um, magklase tayong maglipas na ito. Yeah. Ayun. So, we will be yeah, beautiful. Yes, Coach Mini. Mapapanood nila to sa Coach A Coaching Community. So, if you like that page, you can share it in Facebook also. And as we end our interview, uh, we are declaring good health for the kids, healing and miracle and cure for all those who have been um, who are sick right now and provision especially to, to the kids who are really hungry right now that really the uh, provision will be coming to them no coach g and coach g any last uh, message that you would like to tell to your friend jay that my last message jamie and it's the same message as i shared with you last time we met is we have to be okay for us to do what we do right so uh keep taking care and you know make sure that you have your energy reserves i know we've had this conversation already but take care because those kids need you thank you right. um, I, just, I, just, I just like to thank say you. Like, um, again thank you so much for having me it was a, a real pleasure to chat with you both and yes. Um, if anyone wants to learn more about what we're doing or wants to support, they can look up Project Bantu Philippines, Project Bantu Philippines on mm -hmm. on Facebook or on Google. Um, or you can just add me, Jaime Benedicto, on, on Facebook, and you know you'll you'll find out how you can help uh, through there. Yeah. Thanks again. Yes, and before Thank we end, we will do Thank the you. love from Boom Coach G. Yeah, you can. Uh, this is how we say. So, um, we do this. Yeah. Uh, form your hands into heart shape. Right. Yes. Oh, yes. So that's oh, okay. the love bomb. So, there it is. Love, <laughs> love bomb. Boom. 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 Yes. Spread it. Spread it. Yes. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Have you. A good